Oh boy, I got a testimony today. And I cannot wait to share this. People say God's not real. It's crazy. So I got, I'm so just, I have so much joy in me. I got an awesome testimony that I got back today from last night. This is amazing. Nobody could tell me that God is not real. Which God? Great Value God or specifically your God, Yahweh, the tribal war God of the Israelites? The God who hates foreskin and whose son hates fig trees? That God, specifically? The God who has a fetish for virgins and who has a craving for genocide? I'm assuming that's the God you're going on about. No, he, he doesn't exist at all, and I'm here to tell you. Check this out. I got testimonies every day. There's an, every day is a new testimony. A testimony is meaningless because there are thousands of testimonies every single day for different religions. Why should I believe yours any more than I believe the testimony about the man who was abducted by aliens or the woman who was kidnapped by Bigfoot? I mean, which ones am I supposed to believe? Because they're mutually exclusive. They all contradict each other. They can't all be true. We can't go by testimony alone. Crazy, radical stories, how God touches his people, miracles I've seen in front of my eyes. Wow, you're very fortunate to see miracles every day because the people who seem to need miracles the most never see them at all. But you, you see them on a daily basis. That's great. You must be like God's golden boy. No one can tell me God's not real. But you know what? This story in particular I want to share with you. Last night, I was with one of my best friends, Gio Ramirez. Um, and we went to his wife's family family's house. We got to pray for some people um, in the family. It was an awesome time. And one of my best friends, Gio, that his wife's mother has cancer. Uh, that she has a mass tumor in her colon. And the doctors think it's cancer. They say it's cancer. They believe it. It's a really high percentage. This is what they say. So you're saying that they didn't know for sure it was cancer. That's not much of a miracle. So I said, get her on FaceTime. So that, man, ain't no one, no one can tell me. Listen, no one can tell me God is not real. He is very real. They got, I've never met her mother in my life. He gets his mother-in-law on the phone. She lives in Arizona, okay? I live in Chicago, Illinois. This is not me. This is the power of God. And this isn't the first time this happened. Calls her on video chat. I introduced myself. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? She said, absolutely. She starts crying. We pray for her. And as I'm praying for her, she feels a heat go in her body. Talk about the fire of God. She felt heat. So basically an adrenaline rush. It's very normal. The fire of the Holy Spirit burning that pain, that disease right out. Listen to this. All you skeptics. We prayed with her. She feels a heat only in the area where the, where the mass tumor is. We get off the phone last night when I got the testimony back today. She said last night she felt something get pulled out of her body. Oh my goodness. Nobody can tell me God's never. She goes to the doctor. See, that's when you know it's real. We don't prophesy. We don't prophesy. We don't prophesy. Prophesy. Is that like some new Christian lingo? I've never heard it before. That's terrible. It's terribly stupid. We don't profit a lot. This stuff is real. When you get doctor's doctor reports. Oh great, you have uh, medical reports. Could we see them? She calls to the doctor today. I get the report back, my goodness. And they say that they can't find no cancer. That they were sadly mistaken. Come on, somebody. They were sadly mistaken. The doctors were sadly mistaken. There you go. Video's done. Uh, the doctors made a mistake. There was no miracle. That's what Matt Cruz said. You heard it here. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell button. Yep, we're done. All right, wrap it up. He, cancer got cancer and died. Cancer got cancer and died. Cancer got cancer and died. By the power of God, that thing disappeared completely, and she is praising the Lord today with no cancer in her body. Somebody better praise God in this video. I'm telling you right now, every atheist, every person that doesn't believe in the power of God, he is so real, and I'm on here today to let you know. All you skeptics out there, God's real because of this personal testimony. It's all the evidence you need. You don't need anything more than that. Just testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. That's the best evidence you can get, you know? Oh, he's real, and he loves you. Once again, why should I believe your testimony any more than a Muslim's testimony, or any more than a Hindu's testimony? Which testimonies am I supposed to believe? 
If a personal testimony is sufficient evidence for something, then there's sufficient evidence for, you know, the Earth being flat, or Bigfoot, or anything. There, there's, there's enough evidence out there for the Mothman, you know. Which ones do I believe and which ones don't I believe? Why should I believe yours? We can't, obviously, take anything seriously based on personal testimony alone. We have to have more evidence than that. People that don't get healed blame God, all this stuff. No, 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 your faith will heal you. So all you people who prayed for someone to be healed and they weren't healed, you should have had more faith. The only reason that person wasn't healed was because you didn't have enough faith. That's exactly what Matt Cruz is saying here. People that don't get healed blame God, all this stuff. No, 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 your faith will heal you. He's saying if only you had enough faith, you'd be healed. If you weren't healed, you didn't have enough faith. You know, if your mom died while you were praying for her, well, you should have prayed harder. You should have believed harder. You know, the only reason she's dead is because you didn't have enough faith. It's on you. The only person to blame is you. That's what Matt Cruz is saying here. No, no, no. Your faith will heal you. There's instant healing. There's progressive healing. I've seen a lady that had a bone spur sticking out of her kneecap, and it, rat it disappeared. Too bad there's no video evidence for that. Just because you've never seen this stuff, okay, does not mean it's not real. It disappeared. It is very real. Lady, following week after I prayed for her, bone spur completely disappeared off of her kneecap. Do you, have to, you know that you have to get surgery to shave that off? I'm so fired up right now. There's a God. He is alive and well. He's the king of glory. He's the great physician. Come on, he's the healer. And if you just believe in him today and you understand that he is for you, oh my goodness, and by his stripes you are healed in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is believe in him. If you believe hard enough, you know, uh, all your problems will go away. And if they don't go away, obviously you don't believe in him. It's your fault. If your cancer doesn't leave, you should have believed harder. So what about all the Christians who pray and who lose loved ones, you know? Is it because they didn't believe? Because they do believe. That's what Matt Cruz is telling his hundreds of thousands of fans and millions of other people who watch his videos. He's telling them, you don't need a doctor. All you need is to believe in God and be a Christian. Any, any problem you have, you can just believe away. That's all it takes. Matt Cruz is sending a dangerous message to millions of people. And he doesn't care. That's when healing showed up. That's when the power showed up last night. Today, the lady's cancer free. Ain't no cancer, ain't no tumor. I'm telling you right now, the doctors, they made a mistake. Once again, he says the doctors made a mistake. So she never had cancer at all. So there was no miracle. The miracle was that the doctors misdiagnosed her. You're discrediting your miracle. And you're probably right. And they looked back and they were sure that she had cancer. But guess what? We don't go off the report of the doctors. We go off the report of the Lord. And what he says stands. We don't believe in doctors. We believe in God. We don't need medical attention. We just need Jesus. We don't need to visit the doctor. We just need to kneel in prayer. That's exactly what Matt Cruz is saying here. That's what he's telling millions of people who share his stupid videos on Facebook. And she felt the power of God. Maybe you guys can't tell me guys that wrote, share this video for somebody who doubts. Share this video so that people could be encouraged today that your healing is on the way, that God still loves you and he has not forgotten about you. You all be blessed. Share this video to let everyone know that it doesn't matter what the doctors say. It just matters what you believe. If the doctors tell you you have cancer, don't worry. Just believe that you don't. That's all you need. That's all it takes. And that's what Matt's telling everyone. Superstitious healing rituals have been around for as long as humans have. They're still practiced today and trusted by people across the globe, from many religions, cults, and believers in bogus folklore. Humans seem to have always believed in various forms of faith healing, and with Abrahamic religions making up over 50% of the entire population, and more than 80% of the United States, the method of praying to Yahweh is the most common practice of faith healing. However, prayer to gods for health long predates Judaism. But are Christian prayers more effective than any other superstitious rituals, or even effective at all? Medical studies have been done and show mixed results, all of which conclude prayer to be even less effective than placebo pills, which I'll get to later. Dr. Herbert Benson, a cardiologist and director of the Mind Body Medical Institute, conducted a study with over 1,800 patients in six different hospitals. Here's an excerpt from the New York Times summarizing the medical study. I'll link the article in the description. 
The patients were broken into three groups, two were prayed for and the third was not. Half the patients who received prayers were told that they were being prayed for, half were told that they might or might not receive prayers. The researchers asked the members of three congregations, St. Paul's Monastery, the Community of Teresian Carmelites, and Silent Unity, to deliver the prayers. Analyzing complications in the 30 days after operations, the researchers found no difference between those patients who were prayed for and those who were not. In another of the study's findings, significantly higher number of the patients who knew that they were being prayed for, 59%, suffered complications compared with 51% of those who were uncertain. The authors left open the possibility that this was a chance finding, but they said that being aware of the stranger's prayers also may have caused some of the patients a kind of performance anxiety. The study also found that more patients in the prayer group, 18%, suffered major complications like heart attack or stroke compared with 13% in the group that did not receive prayers. In their report, the researchers suggested that this finding might also be a result of chance. There are many similar studies, all with essentially the same outcome. This just happens to be one of the largest and most conclusive ever executed. And the results were not very encouraging for prayer warriors. But forget the studies, right? What about all the personal testimonies and encouraging anecdotes? How do you explain Matt's story of the cancer which was healed via FaceTime? People can claim anything, but let's assume Matt isn't lying. If his story is undeniable evidence of Yahweh, then what about the identical stories in India or Africa? What about all the Hindus who were healed through their prayer mantras, or Africans who were healed by their local traditions? What about Jack Cohen, who relays a detailed account of how he was healed by aliens? He's not the only one either. How can you tell me that aliens aren't real when they healed Jack's leg and healed hundreds of thousands of other people? How can you tell me voodoo isn't real when millions believe it's healed them? How do you explain Wiccans? How do you explain Rastafarianism? N never mind, I, I'm beginning to understand. Name a religion or a god, and someone has seemingly been miraculously healed by it. But they're all stories, same as all the Christian testimonies. All of them are personal experiences or miracles that coincidentally weren't recorded or documented, or investigated at all. And none of the religious rituals stand out as any more effective than the others. If you're Hindu, you'll receive the same result by praying to your chosen of the 330 million gods. If you're Islamic, Allah will have produced the same miraculous outcome outcome or healing crystals, or watching those weird videos on YouTube. The facts speak for themselves. Hundreds of millions of individuals have experienced some form of healing via whatever means or religion or magic they happen to subscribe to, or be coaxed into trying while gullible enough and susceptible to flamboyant cajolery, or the seduction of Matt Cruz. But once they're put to the test, as in my previously mentioned study, they prove to be ineffective. Except for Rastafarianism, I can't argue with that. One thing you'll notice with all of Matt's videos and theatrical performances is he's always speaking fast and excitable and passionately, like he's trying to sell you something, or covering the fact that there's no substance to anything he's saying, and when possible, he'll throw in some royalty-free inspirational music or sexy lights. Maybe that helps hide the fallacies of his arguments. He does a lot of rambling, but there's never any worth to what he says. He never reaches any logical conclusion or rationally walks through an argument. Nothing he says is supported by evidence half of what he says isn't even biblical. I'm not even convinced he's read the book or remotely understands its content. He loosely references it, but doesn't take the time to provide context, give verses, or make sense of what he's saying. If you take away Matt's dramatically exaggerated facade, nothing he says is compelling. If you read his words on paper, you would notice that they're void of any intellectual value or even a religious wisdom. He does nothing more than toss around vague Christian phrases and buzzwords like fire, love, the spirit, the name of Jesus, Jesus, life, passion, he relies on his audience to take him at face value and not delve too deep into what he's saying. Just be swept away by the adrenaline and dopamine rush from the music and hopeful message, ignoring how hollow it really is. Matt is selling a romanticized heap of garbage, backed up by nothing more than his own ignorance and wishfully fantasized nothingness. For a reason, I break Jesus. I want you to give That's what I thought Jesus. God said. He said, allow you to be made weak, destroy you. It's not because God you. He's Jesus. trying to allow you to brace the test and facing Jesus. no matter what you're going through Jesus. you look at the walls and, and courageous Jesus. in the name about Jesus. Jesus Christ peace to your storm Jesus. man don't believe that Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is Lord, Lord. Dominicans will bow every dominate denomination oh Jesus had his way Word.
So what, he emotionally manipulates people. How does that explain the miraculous healing? Maybe it entices people to Jesus, but it can't convince people they're healed, can it? Yes, it absolutely can, and it does. I'm sure most people watching know what the placebo effect is, so I don't want to go into too much detail. I'll link a couple videos and articles I used for reference here if you want to do any more in-depth studies of this phenomenon. Drug companies, before releasing a new drug, put them through a test to evaluate their effectiveness. They take a large group of patients and divide them in two. They give half the patients the drug and half of them a placebo pill. According to an article from Nature.com, in 1996, patients in clinical trials reported that drugs relieved their pain only 27% more than did a placebo, but by 2013 that gap had slipped to just 9%. This is based on 35 separate US trials. It's insane, a brightly colored tablet with no active ingredients relieves pain 91% as effectively as an actual drug, engineered to do that specific job. Anything from a migraine to a gunshot wound. The effects are demonstrable. Placebo alcohol works effectively to get someone drunk. Placebo can not only relieve pain, but cause it as well. If a patient believes a fake pill will heal them, a laser pointer will hurt them, or a fizzy drink will get them wasted, physiological processes that trigger these effects will be activated. And if you walk around Walmart telling people you have the power to heal their arthritis, they'll feel some relief as well. But try healing an amputee, and this brain glitch won't be so successful. Because it isn't magic, it's neuro science. The people you see televangelists heal from prayer are never suffering from anything serious. It's always something along the lines of cramps or dry mouth or aching in the head or joints. Things that can be temporarily eased through nothing more than the power of suggestion. Other types of people who are healed through prayer are those suffering from an emotional impairment, sadness, depression, anxiety, something of that sort. Magic isn't necessary to relieve these conditions. Simple positive human interaction and intimate reassurance can be the cure for conditions such as these. If you're suffering mentally or emotionally, you can be healed mentally or emotionally. Your phony show becomes even more evident when your Walmart subjects start rambling on about a warm sensation in their body. That's akin to the butterflies you get in your stomach when you're around your crush. It's nothing more than the release of hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. But the major contributor to the warmth everyone experiences is the stimulation of their adrenal glands. This can occur when a, any human gets excited or nervous, like during the climax of a movie or the bass drop in a dubstep track. It will literally heat up your body. It's not magic though, and it doesn't permanently heal anything, although the adrenaline rush can and will temporarily alleviate certain pains. It's especially evident in this one clip where Matt harasses a woman named Randy. She apparently has arthritis and trouble with her back and knees, so she can't walk. It's sad. She has to use a wheelchair. Matt says the Lord told him to find this woman and heal her. He prays for her and then starts live streaming. She says she felt the warmth in her body and isn't feeling pain at the moment. Obviously, Obviously, she's experienced an adrenal rush, as well as some placebic relief. But she ain't walking, Matt. Why isn't she walking? And why don't you get back in contact with her and update yourself and everyone else with her condition? See if the arthritis is actually gone. But you know it isn't. You know you didn't do anything except stroke your own holy saint for your audience. And you do this thing where you meet people and after you see what they're wearing and hear about their health or life problems, you say that Yahweh gave you those details 15 minutes ago. I was just having a conversation with the Lord in my car. He told me to go to Walmart. And he told me there's gonna be a lady here. I'm sure there's several more after I do this video, but he showed me just white. I don't know. I didn't know if it was a, a or not white, a pink, just pink pants. And she got on pink pants with a white stripe on it. And he said she had a problem with her knees. So I have a challenge for you. Sit in your car in the Walmart parking lot with your camera recording. Wait for Yahweh to give you the full name of a person, tell you what they're wearing, and explain their health problem. And it has to be something serious, not a headache or back pain. Maybe a kid with leukemia. After you get the instructions from Yahweh and tell the camera, go in the store, find that specific person, heal them, and then get an update on their health one month later. If you do this, I will 100% become a Christian, guaranteed. Now, I would love to see Matt actually heal someone. It'd be great but it's obviously a hoax. He's a hack fraud. The reason he's never done what I just challenged him to do is because he can't. If he could, he would, but he can't because he's lying to the people he meets as well as his audience. It gets him fame and money, so he doesn't care. No one has ever been healed from prayer any more than anyone has had bad luck after walking under a ladder or been protected by harm by wearing an amber around their neck. Matt Cruz isn't the first faith healing scam artist, but he is one of the laziest. Previous televangelists and such have at least acted out 
about their miracles, Matt just tells you about them and expects you to believe them. He conveniently doesn't provide any names or medical reports or any useful information to validate his tall tales. Like with the woman he prayed for over Skype, it could be completely bogus, but it could be true, and let's just assume it is for the sake of this video. I've known a few people who have battled cancer and won, and everyone attributes their survival to the prayers of their church. I also have known way too many people who were prayed for and didn't survive. And there are cases, like Matt's anonymous woman, where the cancer seemingly disappeared through some form of unexplainable magic. I mean, this is definitely evidence of God, right? I mean, come on, bro. No, it happens pretty often and isn't exclusive to Christians either. One study performed with 187 patients found that 60% of precancerous cervical cells found with pap tests revert to normal within a year. 90% revert within three years. According to Thea Slee, a professor at the University of California, cancer cells and precancerous cells are so common that nearly everyone by middle age or old age is riddled with them. But it's nothing to worry about as evidence suggests that most early stage cancer never even progresses. And as discovered with many screenings, they sometimes even regress and disappear. In 1950, Dr. Engelbert Dunphy concluded if there are factors that lead to the progression of tumors, then the alteration or withdrawal of these factors can result in the dissolution of the tumor. That's certainly the case with many conditions. We don't exactly know what these factors are, but science is looking to find the answer. Prayer isn't. But what we do know is that it happens. Cancer sometimes regresses, especially in early stages, which from the few details Matt provides in his propaganda piece, it sounds like was the case for that woman. It's a lucky break, but it isn't magic. It happens fairly often, whether you're a Christian or Muslim or not religious at all. And another thing too, I may have not even brought up, but Matt himself said, the doctors were wrong. She calls to the doctor today, I get the report back, my goodness, and they say, that they can't find no cancer, that they were sadly mistaken. Come on, somebody. Ain't no cancer, ain't no tumor. I'm telling you right now, the doctors, they made a mistake. This very well could have been the case. With some quick research, I found many statistics exist with compiled numbers from various medical branches, generally showing the rate of misdiagnosis ranging, on average, between 10 to 20 percent. Some show much higher, but certainly, as Matt himself admits, it's very possible that the woman in his story was misdiagnosed with cancer and never actually had it. As for the bone spur incident, that's just absurd. If Matt is praying people's protruding bones into their bodies, he should go to the ER and start saving lives and saving some impoverished people ridiculous medical bills that they can't afford. But I'll get to that in a minute. You hear all of these miraculous stories, but there's no more evidence to support them than that alien guy. And when they are looked into, it's nothing more than a lucky break or absolutely nothing phenomenal at all. Someone is given a one in a million chance of survival, and they survive. Miraculous, right? Given that there are two and a half billion Christians, you should expect many millions of them to come out with stories of God's mercy, and then turned into propaganda propaganda books and garbage films and their story will be spammed all over the godforsaken internet. As for the 999,999 others who didn't survive these odds, they'll just be ignored. It was God's will for them to die, you know? Yahweh works in mysterious ways, which happen to be suspiciously similar to how the world would work if he didn't exist at all. So what? People are misdiagnosed and a touch ignorant, but faith and prayer makes them feel good. It doesn't hurt anything, right? Wrong. I've covered this before, so I'll try to be more concise. Faith and prayer are dangerous. The Bible and proponents of its magical properties are responsible for the deaths of countless individuals, and people like Matt Cruz or Pat Robertson or your local Pentecostal pastor aren't extremists. They teach exactly what the Bible claims, that there is power in prayer. For example, James 5, 13 through 16. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. Mark 16, 17 through 18. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ 
which strengthens me. So if anyone believes the Bible, they by default should believe in the power of prayer, and if the Bible were true, the power of prayer would be obvious. But that's demonstrably not the case, as evident in cases such as these. Amy Harmonson died at age 7 of diabetes because her parents, William and Christine, wouldn't pursue proper medical attention, or any at all. They continually prayed for her as they believed in the power and mercy of Jesus. Shortly before her death, the parents took her to a Christian science practitioner and she was treated with intense prayer. Caleb Tribble died at the age of 1 from a kidney infection. His parents refused to take him to a doctor. In their defense, after being charged with manslaughter, they said they relied on prayer. The judge then closed the case and let them free, saying he was previously unaware of the religious aspects of the case. Elena Wyland was taken from her parents at 18 months after a tumor had completely engulfed her eye. Her parents, Timothy and Rebecca, had refused to seek medical attention because they had faith in their prayers and the prayers of their church. The elders of the church had even anointed Elena with oils, as instructed in the New Testament. In the same congregation as Elena, there have been two other cases of the neglection of children, one of which was 16-year-old Neil Beagley, who died of an untreated urinary tract blockage because the church and his parents, Jeff and Marcy relied on prayer and oil anointment. 15-month-old Ava Worthington died from an easily treatable blood infection because her parents Carl and Raylene prayed for her rather than do anything for her. Carl spent 60 days in jail. Other than that, there were no consequences, as with most of these cases. The list goes on and on and on and it continues to grow. According to the Iowa-based organization called CHILD, children's health care is a legal duty. About 300 children die each year at the expense of their parents' religious beliefs. That's based on the cases we actually discover, and hell knows how many children are malnourished and sickly, being neglected and left living life with ailments and easily treatable conditions because of their Bible-thumping parents who believe in prayer. How many adults or elderly people refuse to seek treatment themselves because they are encouraged by televangelists and the Bible to simply pray their problems away? We don't go off the report of the doctors we go off the report of the Lord us Christians carry which is the power that mm -hmm. raised Christ from the dead living inside of us we carry the answer we carry the cure to every come on we carry the, the <laughs> cure to every disease come on he's the healer and if you just believe in him today and you understand that he is for you oh my goodness and by his stripes you are healed in the name of Jesus we don't go off the report of the doctors we go off the report of the Lord you're not saving people Matt Cruz you're pointing them to their deaths do you care? So why did these people die after being prayed for? After all, those parents had more faith in Yahweh than most Christians do. They were willing to walk the walk rather than talk the talk. When worse came to worse, they believed completely in the words of the Bible and the power of prayer. Most Christians shy away from prayer when crap gets real. But the parents of those unfortunate children were willing to stand by the Bible without question. So if healing from prayer is dependent on faith, then no one is more qualified than those parents, and yet their children aren't here to discuss it. People with stage 1 cancer have roughly a 90% chance of survival, whereas people with stage 4 cancer have a 5 or so percent survival rate. Why is this the case whether they're prayed for or not? Why is Yahweh only as efficient as the doctors? It should make no difference to him how serious your condition is. When given a 5% chance of survival, why does the omnipotent and omniscient Yahweh only save 5%? Why is he only as powerful as the medical field? Why can Yahweh only cure diseases and fix conditions that we humans can. Why can Yahweh save diabetics, with the power of medication of course, but he can't heal an amputee? Wouldn't that be definitive evidence of his power, rather than relying on the power of medication and healing that occurs naturally? Why do Christians even need medical attention? If they truly believed the words of the Bible and trusted the power of Yahweh, they wouldn't go to the hospital. But look what happens to the people who do exactly that. Matt, if you have the power as you say you do, why aren't you visiting people with leukemia or lymphoma or myeloma? Those alone are killing an average of 160 people each day. That's six people every hour. Us Christians carry, which is the power that mm -hmm. raised Christ from the dead living inside of us. We carry the answer. We carry the cure to every... Come on, we carry the, the <laughs> cure to every disease. Come on, we carry the, the cure to every disease. Come on, we carry the, the cure to every disease. So it wouldn't be hard for you and your expensive haircut to go visit and heal the terminally ill at least a couple times per week. Would that be worth your time? What about once per month? Could you manage that? 
Why do you resort to walking through Walmart and giving people warm feelings? Go visit some kids with a brain tumor and save their life. Show them the power of Jesus. Or would that be too much of a hassle? You might miss a live stream or something. I mean, is a kid's life worth that? You've got the power to cure all diseases, but you'd rather act like an idiot in parking lots because it'd take too much effort to go rid someone of their AIDS, I guess? 100,000 children under the age of 15 die of cancer each year. That's well over 250 kids each day. Kids with dreams and passions and future plans to change the world or have a career, travel the globe. Kids are dying before they have their first kiss, drive their first car, get their first job, or even get into high school. You claim to have the power to save these children. Why aren't you doing it? Just go save some of them, please. They're not hard to find. Visit your local hospital. You'll find a few. Show them the power of Jesus or whatever. Just save them for f**k's sake. You should be helping these people, at least some of them, offering these kids a future, giving them their fair shot at pursuing their dreams rather than letting them die just as they touch the starting line. A wise man once said, With great power comes great responsibility. If you have the powers you say you do, then you're an irresponsible piece of trash. But you don't have these powers, obviously. And you're instead a piece of trash for building a career on lies. And worse than that, you're a piece of trash for giving desperate people false hope and leading them to believe in faith rather than seeking professional medical care. We don't go off the report of the doctors, we go off the report of the Lord. If Yahweh is healing people's back pain left and right whenever you pray for it, why is he allowing a quarter million women to die during during pregnancy complications each year. I'm sure their family is fervently praying, why is there no answer for them? If Yahweh is answering your prayers and opening up doors for your career, why can't he answer the prayers of 30 million slaves being bartered by human traffickers and open up the doors for their freedom? Is your job that important? Why is Yahweh so busy hooking up Christian couples on Christian Mingle when there are 2.3 billion people praying for clean water? Is your relationship more important than someone's thirst? What are your God's priorities? Or what are yours? It's disgusting when I hear Christians talking about how Yahweh answered their prayer and helped out with some minor inconvenience. Whether he delivered their prom dress on time, got them a job, possessed some hot guy to ask them out, or helped them find their missing iPhone. It's repulsive. You're such a special little snowflake that the all-powerful Jehovah answers your prayers, helps you feel the fire of the Holy Spirit, as well as sorts out all the trivial matters in your life. How how narcissistic, self-indulgent, self-righteous, self-centered, and egocentric can you possibly be? Or is it simply just your embarrassingly apathetic level of ignorance of the suffering around you? 1 in 12 children grow up malnourished with not enough food for a healthy immune system or muscle growth, but thank God your favorite football team won the game. If you believe the creator of the universe allowed your favorite sports team to win, then you are truly sick in the head. Unfortunately, you hear it after every ball game. The MVP P will be sure to thank God for their victory, despite the fact that if the other team won, they'd have done the same. Does your God choose sides in football? First and foremost, I'd just like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, with him, all things, all things are possible, and uh, that's what happened tonight, you know? Either Yahweh is a major Alabama fan, or Nick Saban is just really freaking good at what he does, you tell me. So how petty is your God that he helps ballers win tournaments and artists win contests and skaters skate good, but doesn't cure people of disease? If you credit him with your sports and thank him for your talents, you're inherently proclaiming that your trivial matters and even your entertainment are of greater value than 300,000 homeless Americans who are praying to the same God for nothing more than a sanitary place to sleep. And how limited is your God that he can fix a few people's aching backs, but just isn't quite up to the task of curing AIDS or leukemia. He'll fix someone's headache, but the 30,000 children under the age of 5 who are dying today He'll just let that one slide. But don't tell me God isn't real, right Matt? So, Matt Cruz, how does it feel to lie to millions of people and to endanger them? How does it feel to provide so many desperate people with a false sense of hope? Do you care? Do you care about the consequences that your fan base has to face when they believe in this crap you're selling them. Do you care at all? Or are you too preoccupied with your nice hair and expensive cars and rich friends and all this fame and publicity you get over social media? Do you care at all about the danger you're putting people in? 
do you care that you're deceiving millions of people? First Peter 3.15 says to always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who challenges you. So this video, Matt, is my challenge, and I'll be waiting for your answer. The answer that you're obligated to give according to the book that you believe in and that you preach to everyone. I'll be waiting for your reply. Just respond in, in some way, some form, preferably in a video response. That would be great. Maybe we can have a discussion. Maybe we can have a debate if you're up for that. I'm up for it. You know, let me know why Yahweh, the tribal war god of the Israelites, is the one true God. Let me know and show your millions of fans that you're up for the task. I don't know. Whatever. But by any means, thanks for watching. Um... If, if you want, you know, if you agree with me or if you disagree with me and want to see more videos that you might disagree with, you can subscribe and you can click that little bell button that we have to click now. I've got a lot more videos in store that'll be coming out in the near future. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. I don't know, but I'm done. So thanks.